Running a podcast alongside a business is a challenge, especially when you're committed to releasing an episode every single week. Katrina Purcell hosts Managed Chaos, and every single week they're releasing 15-minute bite-sized episodes, nuggets of wisdom to support business owners and showcase their consulting expertise. In just a few months, she's already seen some real benefits of running a podcast to her business, and in this episode, she shares her insights. We cover strategies on running a podcast without the stress, unique formats for a podcast that can help it stand out, tips for streamlining the podcast planning and production processes, how to get more value out of your podcast for your business, and so much more. If you're looking for ways of running a podcast with less input and getting more output, then this episode is for you. Hi, Katrina. Welcome to Podcasting Amplified. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm all good. Thank you very much. And the app, thanks for taking the time. So Katrina Purcell, she hosts Managed Chaos uh, with Rachel Anderson, and it's a resource for leaders to engage with the basics of business building. So it's a weekly podcast, uh, short, snappy, 15-minute episodes, um, video and audio. And yeah, she's helping businesses grow in, in all sorts of aspects. So what was the decision to start the podcast? It's been going for a few years now, hasn't it? Why did you decide to start the podcast? And how did it coincide with with the business and, and, and everything else that you do? Yeah, the podcast came about because Rachel and I would meet and we would talk through challenges we were having either with clients or uh, that we had had previously in roles. And we started to feel like there was something missing in the market of podcasting around those messy early days. You know, so there are a lot of podcasts where they'll interview the founders of Airbnb, right? And they'll try to remember what it was mm. like in those early days. But really, they'll just talk about how everything was successful and all the things that they did ended up working out. And we really wanted a podcast that was sort of for the builders, for the people who were in those very early stage trenches that had questions but didn't know where to find the answers and really kind of democratizing the conversation around some of those challenges and around ways and methods that you could go about building your company, starting your company, taking the leap, making hires. And so each episode is only 15 minutes long, unless we get a little long winded. And it's really meant to be bite sized, right? So that you're not kind of listening to an hour long episode and saying, wait, what's my takeaway? And so that was sort of the ethos of building it. She comes from a marketing background. I come from an operations background. So it helps us to come at things from kind of multiple angles. Um, and so just to be useful and impactful for not only startups, but also small businesses. Yeah. And I think, yeah, you mentioned about how it's kind of a gap in the market, speaking about the early stages of the business. I think from a podcasting perspective, it's it's quite refreshing just to see this kind of format, like co-hosted and with the shorter episodes. And I'm sure those shorter episodes help with your target market if they're the kind of people that maybe don't have much time mm -hmm. was that part of the reason around it or was it for, for yourself as well it was so part of the reason was we thought how long does it take most people to commute now i live in new york city so typically if you are commuting it does take you a bit longer than 15 minutes but we thought 15 mm. minutes seems like you could be getting ready in the morning you could be commuting to work and so something to do while you're multitasking and 15 minutes seemed to us like kind of a sweet spot, right? Once you hit 30 minutes, that's kind of long. Um, and we felt like anything shorter than 15 minutes was almost too short to get to the meat of a, of a discussion. Yeah, that makes sense. And you would mentioned before the call, you're looking for more feedback on the podcast, yeah. which is something that, yeah, a lot of podcasters could benefit from, I think, but it can be quite hard to get. Have you had, I mean, it's going to be going for a few years now, have you had any feedback that's sort of shaped the way that you've done the podcast? So, Has it been positive generally? Yes. Yeah, so we've only been going since May. So definitely not, not too long. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. We've gotten a lot of requests from people to be a guest. And so originally yeah. we hadn't, we had thought through that, right? We knew that yes, eventually we would want to bring in guest experts, but thinking through the format. So there are going to be some new guest episodes dropping later this fall, uh, which we're pretty excited about, mm. where only one of us will interview the experts. So it'll still only be two people because we felt like three just feels overwhelming for 15 minutes. Uh, and so 
that was some early feedback we got. We've gotten a lot of great feedback on topics where people have sent us questions and said, hey, can you cover this topic? And so for us, that's the most valuable feedback because we want to know what people want to listen to. You know, we try to keep our ear in the market. We're obviously always recording pretty far in advance, but we are trying to do, yeah. you know, a couple of, of more timely ones for issues that come up. Yeah, that's really good if you can get that side of things yeah, done we batch for you, process the, the uh, planning <laughs> stage. All the content. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the speaking of the, like the the topics that you come up with, is that mostly from sort of suggestions you've had or, or are you looking at the kind of questions people are asking? How do you come up with the topics for the episodes? Yes, it's it's a it's a mix. So in some cases, it could be real life issues that Rachel or I are facing with a client. Um, and we kind of put it into an episode of how we would recommend going about resolving it. Uh, we also get a lot of questions from from listeners, which then become topics. Or in some cases, it's based off of, you know, Harvard Business Review, or different things that are floating around on LinkedIn, like topics that seem where there's a lot of either conversation and we feel strongly uh, one way or the other about something. And so mm. we started in the beginning very planned. It was sort of, you have an idea, now what? Okay, once you get funding, now what? And kind of following the journey. But then it's it's evolved a bit now based off of questions and bringing in AI and you know how to hire the right people for AI and things like that. Cool. Yeah, and I think it helps like you say just going back to having those those short episodes it makes it quite sort of bingeable and it yeah does. seeing as <laughs> you've been doing the podcast for about five months now i guess you know if someone wants to to check it out or, or they they come across you they could probably quite easy get easily get caught up and listen through all the episodes or at least just picking out the ones you know they're quite clearly titled of the topics Yes. Uh, for each episode. So they can just pick out the ones that work well for them. Exactly. We wanted the titles it, to be really descriptive so that if someone wanted to kind of create their own learning journey, they could, right? So they can go in and say, oh, I care about hiring. I care about running effective teams. I care about growth mindset. Let me listen to those episodes. Yeah, they're nice and clear. And just as an example of a nicely presented podcast is i suggest for any listeners to to have a look if you're running a, a podcast and and you feel like your names could do with a little bit of an update <laughs> they're nice and and short but they're really clear on what's what you're going to get out of the episode and then you've got that video as well was it always a video podcast was there any sort of decision around so I hate, to make it audio only or video hate the video aspect but rachel was kind of insistent oh, okay. that we do it <laughs> The yeah. video does lend you to, so we have an Instagram for it and the video does allow for us to, uh, you know, use it on social media and post videos on LinkedIn. And I do think we actually get more engagement sometimes with the videos. Uh, so it was always video oriented before we, we really grew up. We actually would just record on Zoom in the first, you know, yeah. the first few months of doing it because we weren't really sure where it was going to go and how we wanted to do it before we upgraded um, to StreamYard. And now we we use a software that allows us to do the social clips pretty easily and we just upload the videos. And so I think everybody's fairly multimedia these days and, and it's always good to kind of hit people mm. where they are. And part of the point of the podcast was access to the information. And so making sure that if someone wants to watch a video, they can and that it is available to them. Yeah. And I guess the kind of benefit of of having video with your short form or your kind of medium form episodes they're all well a lot of them are under 15 minutes which is means you could put the whole episode on LinkedIn potentially which is kind of the perfect place for your market I suppose and are you so you are you and are you and Rachel doing all of the production side of things or are you getting help on certain areas so it's quite we a lot to do. We are doing all of all of it. We do have a an assistant who helps us with a lot of the social stuff. But I have to say that Rachel really jumped into learning all things StreamYard, editing, video creation, which is funny because that's actually my background, but it wasn't something that I was ready to dive into at the time. <laughs> and mm. so so we do do all of that ourselves at this point. You know, it's one of those things that as it grows and as we see, uh, where things lead, you know, we, 
we may look to get additional help, but as of right now, it's still pretty manageable. We're not doing anything crazy. Yeah, and I guess even if, <laughs> yeah, even if you get help in the future, like the fact that you both know what what to expect helps, like r rather than sort of, you know, getting help right from the start when when you're not sure exactly what you want it to look like yet. Well, and I think that's actually, it's, it's kind of an important thing even for, uh, even for business is that, you know, you, you might want to figure it out yourself before you're ready to turn it over to someone else, just so that you know what you're doing and you know what you're turning over, right? You can create an SOP and you can help them understand, you know, what you've decided is sort of the ethos of the podcast and how you want it to seem. There are different things we've talked about yeah. adding, um, you know, in one episode, we kind of go through corporate buzzwords and you know so there's like oh we, we could add a sound effect do we need it right away no probably not but long term might be something fun to add with a definition of the word um and so it's it grows yeah. over time and it's okay to iterate and allow that to happen i think people tend to not want to put stuff out into the world because they want it to be perfect when they do and then they never do it yeah no i know what you mean and shifting gears a little bit in terms of from a business perspective how does it work around your business and has it what kind of have you seen any benefits so far within the last few months for yourself and and rachel with your businesses yeah i mean i think that it definitely helps with awareness i've been using it now in outreach emails so when i'm reaching out to someone and i think that they could utilize my services it's very easy to send that 15 minute clip of a particular thing topic that is relevant to them and they're able to see you as a real person as opposed to just an email and so i'm getting better response rates on those messages uh, because i think it's it's also offering them almost a little bit of free consulting in some ways because we do talk about you know kind of how to structure things or how to think through through things um, around setting up KPIs um, or change management. And so it it has helped me um, get more responses. I think it's also helped in some cases just to keep us on a schedule of having conversations. And so I think that keeps you up to date on what's going on. It's good because Rachel lives down in North Carolina and I live up in Brooklyn, uh, New York. And so we're kind of in different ecosystems and it's great for us to be able to have those com different conversations of what's happening in your startup world or what's happening in mine and, you know, what kind of challenges are people bringing to you? Uh, and so it's just helped me stay more kind of aware and up to date on what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. And it's great to see that you've already sort of got some benefit from that because, you know, podcasting is, it's kind of a, a long road and it can take a, a lot of time for some podcasts to start seeing any real traction or any immediate benefit from it. Yes, it's definitely, it's definitely it, more of a labor of love at the beginning, I think, or just something that you enjoy and you want to get out there. And then it, I think it's, it's, it will take time, I think, to develop into like a real source of business or potential clients. Yeah. But the goal was really more just getting the content out there for people. But yeah, it works. It sounds like it works really well as on that kind of coaching consulting model where, mm -hmm. They get some more general advice, and but then if they want that one to one, then they know where to find it. Cool. So, and have there been any sort of challenges so far that you've you've faced over the last five months or so with the production? Has it been pretty smooth sailing, getting the episodes out each week? We had a couple of false starts. Just like I said, we used Zoom at the beginning and we were having some trouble making sure we were getting the local recordings and trying to figure out the easiest way. So we switched to StreamYard, which has been much better. It definitely, it does the local recording. So if one of us has a internet issue, you know, we're still recorded and it, and it isn't going to cause a problem on the actual final product, which is great. Um, we redid the intro we thought about redoing the intro and then we decided not to, that we would wait for season two because it became sort of complicated on how to do it. Um, so if you've listened to our intro, that is an AI voice. Um, and so when we tried to redo it, it was not, we couldn't find the same AI voice. Uh, and so it didn't work out very well. And we kind of had to say, all right, maybe this is a season two thing. I think the other thing is just making sure that the great part about it is that I really enjoy working with Rachel. And so this has been a great way for us to 
be able to kind of pull each other along. So if one of us is like, I don't know if I can record today, the other person will say, let's just do it. You know, it's just a conversation. Come on, you can do it. And so by having that that co-partner to do it with, I think it really helps to both set the schedule, keep you on track, but then also just kind of keep you motivated and keep you excited about it. I think if I was doing it on my own, it would be, you know, wouldn't be as fun. Yeah, for sure. The same kind of thing with growing a business. Exactly. Really. When you're doing it on your own, it does make it harder. Have there been any episodes that have stood out in particularly as being like more successful than the others in terms of your stats and the response to it? And have there been any kind of patterns that you've been able to gleam from from the more popular episodes? A great question. So the change management episode got a lot of views. It continues to get views. And it's the one we've gotten the most actual feedback on. Because I think a lot of people don't even yeah. understand what change management is. <laughs> a few of our data episodes also have done really well because we tried to break down sort of what is data why does everyone care about it and why are they talking about it? How to kind of have practical KPIs and what implementing those actually looks like. And so that one has also mm. gotten a lot of a lot of positive feedback. There's a couple of more recent episodes where it feels like we're trailing off in the number of people who are watching. And so what we're trying to figure out is why is it that we're not doing as good of a job of pushing it on LinkedIn and social media? Are the topics on its relevant? So we're trying to figure out figure that out a little bit. The earlier episodes are definitely getting a lot more airtime, uh, which is great, but we're just trying to figure out, okay, what are we, what have we changed? Or is it just that, you know, those are more readily available. People found them sooner. Are there patterns to when people listen? And so that's kind of the analytics that we're digging into now. Mm, that's interesting. So it, when, you, when you say the earlier episodes are getting more, more attention are, are people, so people are going back and listening to the earlier episodes still, but there's fewer sort of jumping on board with the new ones. Exactly. Is that, is that exactly. right? Exactly. And so yeah. it's hard to tell. Is it just that they're starting from the beginning and they just haven't gotten to the later episodes yet? Um, or do those topics resonate better? The earlier mm. episodes definitely had more topics around leadership, where the later episodes yeah. are much more into like operational and, and more real-time issues. And so we're trying to kind of tie the threads together. We did some really great go-to-market episodes that were requested specifically by a listener in terms of what does go-to-market mean and who should I be hiring and what should that look like? Uh, and so we've seen those do pretty well because they were specifically requested. And it looks like they've been passed around probably within organizations where people felt like either go-to-market wasn't being done properly or maybe wasn't defined properly. <laughs> And so we're just trying to find yeah. those kind of niche things, those topics that really resonate. Yeah, no, it sounds like a, a good plan. And, you know, th there's always going to be some things you do want to cover that unfortunately aren't going to don't have quite the same uh, sort of headline power, like when you have certain things like data and AI and, and things. Yeah. I guess if you put out another change management episode, then it would be clear, be a bit more clear if, if it was down to the topic or down to more this just an earlier episode exactly and is do you have like a, a particular ideal listener i know obviously it's people starting starting a business how closely does that link to your ideal client that you'd bring on as a as a consulting client and then the same for for rachel is there a, enough crossover there for it to be valuable to both of you so there is enough crossover between the clients that we would get. I think oftentimes I'm looking for people who are trying to grow and they're struggling to grow. So they don't know how to scale. They are maybe lost. They've gotten funding and they're not really sure where's the right place to put it. Whereas Rachel's clients oftentimes are kind of in the same place, but are more looking for how are they going to market or brand a new product? How are they going to maybe shift their entire brand messaging? So there are clients where we could work together. She's also doing a lot of leadership coaching, and then I do sort of executive mm -hmm. mentorship. So there's some overlap there as well. We've actually not been able to work together with a client yet. That is a goal, but we haven't found the right, the right client. For me, I'm working with tech companies, but also nonprofits. And so it's, 
they both have a lot of the same challenges. And to be fair, most early stage tech companies are not making a profit. <laughs> so it's somewhat similar. Yeah. <laughs> but they have a lot of the same growth and organizational kind of scaling challenges. Yeah. No, it sounds like a, a sort of good way, way about it. You don't, you're not fighting over all the exact same clients necessarily. Yes. Our skills are very complementary, but definitely not, not the same. Yeah. And you'd mentioned about the way you're sort of promoting and, and marketing the episodes. What is your process in in that sense? Like, have you got like a, a short or two for each episode? We do. And is it just on LinkedIn? So we do have a, we have an Instagram page, which seems to be getting somewhat more following, uh, but we mostly do it on LinkedIn. We each do a post on Wednesdays that talks about the episode that dropped that day. And then typically on Thursdays, we reshare each other's posts. On Fridays, Rachel's much better about this. She'll actually put out a post kind of diving deeper into the topic and making it a little bit more relatable to how she could help clients that are experiencing the issue. I'm not as good at doing that because I'm not as good at posting on LinkedIn as Rachel. But that actually gets, again, also mixed traction, I would say. You know, some some posts get a lot yeah. more activity and a lot more people posting. So we're still working on that LinkedIn algorithm of, you know, what hashtag should we be using? And sometimes I try to use the video from the episode. Sometimes I try not to, to see, you know, if that helps it in terms of how it shows up in the feed. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess being able to sort of dive in into those those topics must help, and and having that video there as well is is always good. So, has there been any particular sort of things that you've gleaned from the way that you're you're marketing the podcast that has changed the way you've you've done the marketing over the last few months? like you've been experimenting with different hashtags and, and different ways of posting. Has there been anything that you're like, oh, yes, when we do that, that works well for our, our engagement? There's been nothing where I felt like it was, okay, that's a silver bullet. I think definitely being mo consistent works out the best. So where we've been very consistent about following our social process of making sure we're posting on the various days and like making sure that we're tagging and, and linking, I think that's been the thing that's had the most success, to be honest. And in the early stage, that could be why some of those early podcasts, like sometimes someone will go back and like my post from when we launched the podcast back in May. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think there's something to be said for sort of like just the consistency and making sure that you're, you're constantly talking about it and going back to it. Because the more times people see it, the more likely they are to, to finally kind of like click and kind of get hooked and listen. Nice. Yeah. And ag again, another benefit of having a co-host there is that you you get to share it on, on, on both, both of them. Of yeah. Audiences. And we have very different networks. So that's good too, because when we cross post, it's, you're getting a lot of different people. Yeah. Are there, were there any podcasts in particular that inspired you to get started with it? I know you'd mentioned that some of the podcasts lean a bit too heavily on the, you know, the, the huge successes. Yeah. So I mean, a podcast that I love to listen to is called Masters of Scale. Yeah. You know, I really, I like, I like that one. I feel like it is very valuable. I think it just, as I said, like it's talk, it's talking from the moment of we've already been, we've already scaled, right? We're not in the nitty gritty of it. And mm. you're having to remember what was it like? Um, the short format kind of came from um, the podcast that, I was listening to called Finance Daily, which is like, it's very short snippet podcast. And so that was sort of where that idea came from to kind of keep it very short. Um, and nice. then I do like the Saster episodes, which is, you know, more geared towards SaaS, SaaS products and SaaS companies. But yeah. again, it's like really long and they're kind of nitty gritty. And like, it's a very like deep, deep conversation. And, and what we wanted to do was sort of like whet the appetite, but not overwhelm. We've talked about like how, how the podcast has benefited your your businesses. Has there been any, have there been any kind of personal development benefits that you've gotten from running the podcast in terms of the sort of skills? I know you said Rachel had to pick up a lot of new skills uh, for the production side of things. Yeah. Have there, has there been anything that you've gotten out of it personally? I'm trying to think. I, I think 
just, I, it's been a learning experience for me. I mean, I never thought I would launch a podcast. I think it's also been good to learn to put yourself out there and kind of have your ideas floating around out there and have them available for people to agree or disagree with is sort of nerve wracking because you don't really know how people are going to respond. Uh, and so I think it's, that's been a good sort of personal growth experience. Uh, I think the yeah. one thing I would say the podcast has helped my mom actually understand what I do for a living. So that's been helpful <laughs> mm. because I think we're able to sort of break it down and, and it just becomes more clear to her. She's, you know, she's always been very involved in my career and wanted to know what's going on. But I think it's much easier to say, okay, this is what's happening and, and this is what I do and, and this is why it's important and uh, and this is how it impacts other people. But yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me has been putting stuff, putting myself out there and being able to put my thoughts out there and being able to kind of have something that's consistently happening. Uh, and then that way we can, we can get feedback, we can get, you know, we can get and learn more. Yeah. And I can, I can relate to that. Those, uh, the, uh, helping people understand better what you do and, and uh, yeah, making it easier to put yourself out there. Yeah. And just finishing up, if, if there was one thing that at the beginning of the year you wish you'd known before you started the podcast that would have made things a bit easier for you, what would that have been? Oh, that's a great question. I think for me, it's the content calendar. I think we tried to create a content calendar, but for me, it's each week when we sit down. So we record weekly. Um, we record at least two episodes a week. And then we kind of release them on a, on a staggered basis. And sometimes it's hard to think through the content. Uh, and it's hard to think through what will be impactful. What is something that we can kind of condense to 15 minutes? How can we present it in a way that it's useful? And so I think we did try and set up like 52 weeks of episodes. And now we've kind of scrapped that and we're like, no, it needs to be more sort of in the moment and it needs to we need to feel like it flows but we spend so much time putting together the 52 week thing <laughs> that sometimes we feel yeah. bad deviating from it and so i feel like we put a lot of upfront time that probably could have been better spent just getting recording and getting going but there was a lot of you know oh let's think about it and that's why i made the comment earlier like it's never going to be perfect so you should just kind of start um and so we probably could have started even earlier if we weren't you know, so mm. worried about like everything being perfect. Yeah, just get started. Yeah. And I imagine it helps a little bit when, when it's somebody that you know that you're hosting with you can probably more easily just have a conversation without having to do too much planning. Exactly. Cool. Okay, well, I really appreciate appreciate you, you coming on to, to the podcast and, and sharing your expertise, your experiences so far with with how how the podcast has helped you in your business i'm sure a lot of a lot of listeners are gonna gonna get some inspiration from that especially if if you kind of want to change things up or if you're just starting if you're just thinking about starting a, a a business podcast or a podcast in general just thinking about the different structures uh the different formats that you can you can do you know it doesn't have to be an hour long interview every every week or or you know with with a new person every week there's there's different ways of going about it so so if if anyone wants to take a listen or watch then they can search managed chaos on any podcast platform or go to the managed chaos podcast.com website is there anything else that you'd like to share at all no i think that's it just take a listen give us some feedback we are always kind of changing things up we'll probably launch season two in january so that it kind of follows the calendar year so we'll expect some new updates nice. uh coming soon thanks again katrina take thank care. you thanks for listening to podcasting amplified if you enjoyed today's episode please leave a review on your favorite podcast platform We'll be back next time with another conversation offering more insights to take your podcast to the next level and help you to achieve success. Happy podcasting.